You want to make some of the fastest gains you've ever made in your lower body? Use the sled. Here's the best part. You can do it every single day. Ooh. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. You know what's, uh, what's... So overlooked, man. So overlooked, and it is one of the few <clears throat> strength and muscle building lower body exercises, I guess you could put it in that category, that you literally can do a tremendous amount of frequency on yeah. and not suffer like the same consequences you would if you did, like let's say, squats every day or front squats oh or... God. Anything like that. I've been such an evangelist of sleds for so long, and it's it's just now like I, I get encouraged because I see it more often in the gyms, and like they actually make turf areas for the sled. So I think that um, you know it's more accessible. So it's like we can talk about it now. It used to be one of those like functional tools that only you know sports specific people had in their gyms or not. But there's so much value in the sled, especially I mean anywhere from you know a kid to you know 80 year yep. olds like there's just it's it just spans across like all uh you know different types of of people and where they're coming from yeah. do you do you think that has a lot to do with it, no eccentric portion yep. of the exercise i absolutely do yeah i know i'm right now i'm trying to think of like what other movements that are popular where uh it's completely eliminated the eccentric portion of the exercise yeah. well uh, you're doing the work right like the the machine isn't like placing a force on you uh, so you're the one that's driving, dictating, you know, how much effort you want to put into it. I know. What else is like that? Is there anything else that would be I like? I mean, Olympic lifts technically are all, um, you know, no eccentric, right? You, you do the, you do a clean and press, drop it or a clean, drop it. Um, and, and that's, there's something to be said about that. The eccentric part. So you have whenever muscles contract three, three different ways, right? Generally there's concentric, which would be like, if I'm doing a curl, I'm curling the weight. Eccentric is lowering. That's actually a, a type of muscle contraction. And then isometric is holding. And the, the one that causes the most damage the eccentric. is eccentric. It's the lowering of weight. Isometric <clears throat> and uh, concentric cause less damage. Now, there is a positive to eccentric. It's also the most connected to muscle growth. But the limiting factor is you can't do it all the time. It's so damaging on the body. So this is kind of like a hack, right? With the sled, I can do it so frequently like i can literally do three sets you can basically of, do it every day you can and you get and it's super safe like it's i feel no joint pain in fact i feel like my joints almost get like a chance to recover so if i'm starting to feel stiff from doing lots of squats and deadlifts mm -hmm. i just start using the sled yeah. i don't lose any muscle mass which tends to happen if i do any other exercise aside from those other ones and my <laughs> joints feel really good and i can do it like every single day if I wanted to and feel fine. It's, you know, uh, one of my favorite things to do. You know, it, it's inevitable when you are training, no matter what kind of great programming you're following that, you know, we all have a tendency to have those days where we overreach. Um, it's one of my favorite tools to supplement into my routine. When I'm, Let's say I, I have a, a program I'm following and I'm squatting at least two or three times in the week. And, you know, on Wednesday I get, you know, a little excited and throw on probably more than I should. And then Friday I'm back at legs again and I'm really sore still from Wednesday's workout. I'll drive the sled that day. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite things to do and replacing something like that when I overreach because then I still feel like I get this great workout, but then I it almost feels recuperative yeah. uh, while, while also still building. It's it's a weird- That's what I'm saying. It's yeah, so it's unique. Um, and, and then there's some other benefits as well. Um, one of them is the that it, it strengthens the foot- and the ankle yes, yes. through that range of motion. So like you could do calf raises and you'll technically work the foot and the ankle, of course, but it's not working the foot and the ankle in conjunction with the knee and the hip, which is how you, you'll you use it in everyday life. With this, as you're driving, your foot has to get stronger and mm -hmm. your calves and your tibialis and all the stabilizers have to stabilize and strengthen. And the benefits are tremendous because they all work together. So, it's, so your weakest link starts to catch up. And this is what I've noticed. My feet and my ankles feel so much sta more stable and stronger because I've been driving. Oh, it's sled. huge for that, especially athletes. Like it, you know, being on the forefoot and and you know, like you don't want to be on your heels in any athletic endeavor. No. And so this is one of those that helps you kind of train and strengthen again. Uh, you know, your feet to be uh, stable and strong in those positions. And so to to uh, add some some volume to that and frequency to that, I think is super valuable. Yes. And then what you can do, and this is what I've been doing too, is you can incorporate some isometric um, stabilization in the upper body with your drive. So the two different ways I'll do this are either fully extended. So let's say I'm driving, you know, three or 400 pounds on the sled, which is, you know, a decent amount of weight for me. Keeping my arms totally extended and fully extending my shoulders, like that has to, I have to be able to support the weight 
with my arms, <laughs> shoulders, scapula, my core, right? So that's good. Or I can bring the sled here. Mm -hmm. And now I have to stabilize in this kind of down pressing position as I'm driving with my legs. And they all, they both have really good carryover to upper body exercise. Well, shout out to, to um, the knees over toes guy uh, putting out great information on this stuff too, but about also like bulletproofing your knees and like getting yeah. in that position, like even dragging it backwards, Yes, you know, so it, it puts a lot less strain and, and impact on your knee, but also gets it stimulated uh, in order to um, also like build strength and support around your knees. Yeah. And then those of you that are like, you know, don't enjoy the, I guess, the stamina conditioning aspect of exercise, which I get. Um, that's not my favorite either. The sled gives you a decent amount of that. Like if you push it just further than a short distance, um, you'll, your heart will start to beat and you'll get like a conditioning. This is why athletes like to use it uh, or why coaches who train athletes like to use it because they get the strength with the, with the, with some of the strength stamina thrown in, which you don't necessarily get uh, as easily with traditional lower body exercises. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.